at the end of the day, I suggest rewrite. Take three things in your day. Start with that. For seven days, take three things that happen in your day and change the script. That's all for now. Change the script and practice with that one experience. Practice it until it feels changed for you. Mm. So that you're, if you're re And we want to welcome Fazila Dijor. She is in South Africa. We're going to hear more about that in a moment. But first, I'd like to introduce this lovely lady. I've known her for a few years now. We go back to meeting again on that marvelous Facebook site, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings, which most of my viewers have now subscribed to, I'm sure. And uh, Fazila, I, first, I just want to welcome you. Hello, how are you? Hi, Robert. Thank you. I'm I'm fantastic. It's been uh, it's such an honor to be here with you. Thank you. Well, it's been an honor to know you and work with you. And now I'm doing my my first interview with you and I'm excited for it. So uh, we go back again. We met on, on Facebook. Basically, you were one of the marvelous commentors. And that's really our process in uh, growth in in that Facebook site. Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings, of course, is about how you can manifest your best life in ways using his marvelous teachings and your comments were just fabulous you again similar to uh, many of, of our, our current coaches you weren't on there asking questions you were studying and reading and meditating and learning these processes and you began to explain them in your in, in your posts and people were commenting and just loving your posts and i said you know this uh, myself and uh, the rest of the administration on that Facebook site, we recognized you and we said, this this lady has marvelous potential. She is already really a coach and she's doing absolutely marvelous. And so you became a moderator first. And then now you've been a, a coach with us for a little while now and uh, you're doing marvelous from what I understand. And your clients love you. And we love you too, of course. So I wanted to find out more uh, about your background, and then I want to find out more about how you've come to really go deeply into the laws of the universe and how they've changed your life for you and your clients and students. So first of all, tell us about uh, where are you in South Africa, and tell us about your background with that. Well, I live in Cape Town, and it's one of the three main major cities in South Africa, but I grew up in uh, Devon. It's also a coastal city in South Africa. And um, for me, really, it's living the dream because I literally have that small town, small town girl story and the emergence into where I am now. So it really is living the dream. Um, my background is in like the vast range of metaphysics, behavioral, uh, behavioral psychology. Mm. I'm a shamanic healer as well. I, mm. I first studied metaphysics when I did my degree through the University of Sedona. And I'm a, an ordained minister, which I don't talk about a lot. And I'm not surprised that I was led to Neville um, in terms of the law of assumption and the teachings. And... Um, and I and, and I realized that just recently, uh, in terms of how the how my my life has progressed. Um, so my background is varied. I love anything to do with consciousness, spirituality, human potential. How do we how do we become more? Realize that because what started me on this is I twenty years ago I wanted to know more. I wanted to know what is out there. What am I meant to do? And, and I know a lot of people get to that point in life. And uh, yeah, that's what started me is a simple question. What am I doing here? Well, that's absolutely, that's that's fascinating. And I want to go back to one of the things you said. I'm, I, I, I knew that I was going to end up learning more about you, just like even <laughs> I thought I knew you. But um, you said, you mentioned Sedona. You're talking about Sedona, Arizona in the United States? Yes, and uh, so I've studied uh, with the University of Sedona um, online part-time. I'm, I'm, I love technology. The fact that we are, 
you know, you're in the Philippines and I'm here in South Africa and we have such a close connection uh, in terms of our friendship, our working relationship as well. And being here now um, together and talking about life. So, well, you know, it's fascinating because um, I, I love Sedona and I've been to Sedona no less than a dozen times. And I've attended several seminars there myself. That's where I met uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza and uh, oh. three or four of the other uh, characters, if you will, and coaches and manifestors from the uh, the book, The Secret, the movie, The Secret. Um, I actually met several of them and, and attended their seminars in Sedona. So Sedona is a spiritual place. It is an amazing place. So that is doesn't surprise me, except that I didn't, I didn't know you did that. Or you probably told me and I didn't, didn't catch it before. But that's absolutely amazing. So you have a lovely background in manifesting and studying the laws. So what led you to, uh, do you recall what led you to the uh, Facebook site, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings, and your path with that group? I had moved to Cape Town in late 2020. This was just after COVID had um, the major part of our lockdown. Here in South Africa, we had quite mm. a severe lockdown. But I was led to... I was led to coming to moving for us to move to Cape Town with my husband and we relocated. And when I did that, I I will say it was quite a quite a difficult time for me then because my but my my practice was very much um in person. I had been looking to move online and uh, when we moved, I was forced into doing that. And I went through quite a difficult time of trying to understand how was I going to do this. And um so in 2021, um, I started to look a little bit more into the metaphysical teachers because I, I knew, knew about Joseph Murphy, Lawrence Goble Shin. I'd been studying their works for a long time. Neville's work, not so much at, you know, in the past couple of years until I, I joined one Facebook group, didn't like the vibe, and then Facebook started suggesting other groups to me. <laughs> and then... I found Neville Goddard Mystics Teaching Facebook group and I was like, wow, I love what is happening here because there was so much being given, like people would come on and ask questions and uh, moderators would give them so much that I just, I just started following what were the recommendations and from there I'd get a recommendation to go read or listen to Brian Scott or listen to Josiah Brand. Mm. And uh, and the questions resonated with me because they helped me with the self inquiry of what I was going through. So so that's how it started. Mm. Well, that's absolutely amazing. So uh, again, I I recall that uh, just reading your your comments and then you were posting once or twice a week and your posts were were really teaching posts. They weren't again a cry for help. And there's nothing wrong with that, friends. If you've got, I mean, our viewing audience to let them know, you've got questions, you've got uh, concerns. We understand that. But the, de the development of being self-sufficient, if you will, and becoming your own best coach and really learning who you are and how to apply the laws of the universe come, as you know, as you experience, through personal study. So what, uh, after those other teachers, when you got into Neville, which books or mm -hmm. uh, works of Neville particularly attracted you that you began to focus on that began to really help you uh, bloom? Wow, that's like asking if I have a favorite niece and nephew. Uh, <laughs> being so put on you the love spot, it all. But You're like me, you love it all. I do, but we love them in different ways as well because of the personalities. Mm. So I will say that feeling as the secret was that opener for me because Neville speaks about that time of sleep and mm. how important it is and prayer mm. and meditation yeah. and, and but for me it was that because I love understanding human psychology I love understanding why how do we function so when I know how things work together I also then can understand how what to do and what not to do. And and the power uh, of the subconscious mind really, it, that opened up for me. Um, I will also say that your first masterclass that I took with Live in the End, um, 
that for me was like I was absorbing that information. I was taking it in. And uh, I, and the other one that I really, I really like is, um, I, I really resonate with is the law and the promise. Because um, he talks, Neville talks about the law and what many people have to come to grips with understanding the law of assumption. Um, and then what the promise means and how we unfolding in the promise. So yeah, it's it's every every book of his has been quite a uh, insightful and an experience for me. I would say that. Absolutely. Now you actually have grown to such an extent. Of course, you're you're one of our our top coaches on um, TrueCosmic.com, which is the the fundamental website for our Facebook site and True Cosmic Academy, where the classes can be found. And I've mentioned that on other videos for our friends too, but um, you conducted a marvelous class recently that is available for, again, very minimal cost at this point, uh, concerning revision. Tell us about that and the growth that you experienced and the results with the people you teach and, and your students. Wow. Well, when I, I chose the topic of revision because I had been using it in my life. Um, for anyone who doesn't know revision, it literally is about changing the past so that we create an amazing future. And we know also the future is not out there. It's here. So to create that, um, to, to release that energy of the past and what whatever experiences we would have had that we didn't like, that we didn't, we don't want to continue to be our future, um, is is what I uh, what I experienced during putting the masterclass together was taking a deep dive into the work. I found I was being revised. It sounds strange, but I still hold true to those words. It's something you and I have chatted about. Revision is really um, taking one, taking a look at oneself as to what didn't you like about anything that happened with you. And, and you know, part of my growing up and my background, Robert, we've chatted about this. I've had some um, trauma going, growing up, things that a lot of people will have have been in therapy for etc and uh, I found revision helped me to let go of the past prior to finding Neville's work what I found was the work I'd done and I use this analogy mm -hmm. I, I saw that I'd been rearranging furniture in the house I had not reconstructed the house when I started with when I started applying the uh, the teachings of revision and how Neville's teachings have come across for me I could take out pieces and rearrange my architecture. That's mm. the power that it, it mm. brought about. Mm. And so when I did the masterclass, I really, I poured a lot of what I experienced into that. I didn't want it to just be, well, come along and we're going to teach you these steps and you're going to, you must go revise, etc. I really, anyone who, who who takes the time and really sits with the with the with each of the uh, classes, which by the way is like eight hours of recordings itself and the workbook that oh, no, allows it's a one to class. Go. And it's and again, you have there were four ninety minute classes, weren't they? Yeah, they they were for for some of them went on a little bit longer because that was the mm -hmm. energy of it, and, and it's so just, they're just chock full of information. And again. As with uh, Cheryl's class that I mentioned in my last video, which all of you, if you haven't seen uh, Cheryl, Filipina, Becoming a Millionaire, go watch that one. That was my previous class, previous video. But um, as, as with Cheryl, um, you really, uh, in your class, you give so much meat. There's so much there. As I said with her class, her class could be a $1,000 seminar easily. Yours could have been a, a $1,000 seminar easily. And again, uh, likewise with mine, but we are uh, really want to help people. And if they go to truecosmic.com and look up the courses and classes, the, afford the affordability part might actually throw them off because you're used to going online and seeing these marvelous teachers and you've got to, you know, you've got to go to Toronto or you've got to go to Sedona or you've got to go to California or somewhere around the world in Europe for a class that might 
costs with a hotel, you know, thousands of dollars. And this is something they can do right in their fingertips online and pause, review, watch again. Once they know, isn't it true? Once they buy your class, it's yours. It's theirs. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And they can go in into the teachings as, as uh, deeply as they want to because the workbook itself I've structured so that you've got to really reflect. And that's what I find with Neville's work is it's almost like putting in a program when you read his, his uh, teachings. And, you, and what I've also done is people do not have to go searching. I've, I've pulled in the relevant uh, teachings so that they can reflect on that alone. I know some people are put off by uh, trying to understand his language, etc. By the way, I believe for me, Neville Goddard, Joseph Murphy, etc. I like the PhD of metaphysics. That's the level. So I get, I was even put off. For five years ago, I saw Neville's work and I didn't get it. And now that I get it, I'm on the other side saying to everybody else, you should really be doing this. It's amazing. There's so much you are going to get out of it. And so, yeah. I'm really passionate and enthusiastic about it. And part of it has been your infectious uh, way of teaching and your and your encouragement. Well, thank you. And, yeah. and, and that's exactly what you do also is that um, now Neville's work is very deep. We understand that a lot of mm -hmm. people pick up one of his books and they go through one, uh, <clears throat> perhaps one of his books or chapters and they, they kind of, they love it, but they don't quite get it. Well, it, it involves repetition and really and, and going deep and actually cracking out a dictionary. Because English was a much, there you go, Neville Goddard collection, and that's my Bible, so to speak, as far as metaphysics. It's not replacing the Bible, but you, you all know what I mean. Um, and so really, what I, my point was is that you, like myself, take a very deep subject and you break it down, step one, step two, step three. You give specific examples of people applying it in their lives, how they can apply it in their lives. Now, on that note... We have people from around the world watching us in this video, in this interview, not just in South Africa, but worldwide. And many of them are new to Neville's work. They're new to manifesting. So if you could take, for example, that subject of revision, and you can certainly add to it if you like, and break it down in a really, really condensed form, how can, what, what are the simple steps that they will learn through that class? So in terms of revision, the first step for me is self-observation and it comes from where what is it that I'm experiencing especially if we're not in a good space what's going on that I don't like about this and it simply is looking at that and and seeing what would not the often people want to go to the opposite the opposite is not quite the same as rewriting this to be your ideal so there's a there's a difference and often people get that they get stuck with this and the analogy that I would use there is for someone who wants to lose weight they don't just go to I don't want to you know I want to I want to be thin the embodiment of it is I want to look and feel great in my body which means that I ha I don't carry this weight and I'm at the ideal weight that I love now Getting to that can be a little bit tricky, but what I suggest people do is rewrite it initially to the way you want to see it. Change the state first. Mm. Don't try so much to achieve the manifestation. And this is where I'm seeing a lot of people are stumbling. Mm. I'm sure you've seen that as well, Robert. It's uh, the practice. Mm -hmm. There's a gap between from when you start applying the practice to really mastering it. And I found it as well. Often I'll pick something up and I'll go read it again and it hits me different. And then I realize, oh, I missed that part in terms of what I've been applying. So I would say, please start with simple step, rewrite the day. Re and most people don't drop, they, they can actually drop into that point in time if they're having an experience and change it. But that, that requires them observing and catching themselves immediately. So at the end of the day, I suggest rewrite. Take three things in your day. Start with that. For seven days, take three things that happen in your day and change the script. That's all for now. Change the script and practice 
with that one experience practice it until it feels changed for you mm. so that you're if you're reverberating through a horrible incident in the day change it until you're no longer feeling that that shakiness or the anger or the frustration so we're going to take it in baby steps initially um mm. because it can seem like i don't know how to rewrite my day i don't know how to do revision so i just want to say if you look at a mountain you're going to take the first step and here's the first step. Just change your day. I love that. Okay, now I wanna take a specific example. Example, yes, say yes. for example, a real life example where I'm I'm working with someone and I am actually in a physical office or online, I have to work with a certain individual who's irritating me and we just don't hit it off. We misunderstand each other. And on that day before I go to bed, would you recommend that I literally with a notebook, maybe write it out how I want to? Is it just mental or is, or are some people are more visual and writing it out might help, but actually you're not just creating the opposite of which they're treating you in a lovely way, but you're creating the ideal of it. Maybe you can highlight that again for us and how they would do yeah. it specifically in that situation. So here's what I recommend. Number one, you know that you've had this clash. So you say you go home tonight and um, you've had another encounter with this person. I would, what I would do then is just sit in a space of quiet, lit, lit stuff that has been troubling you. Just pause it for a while. To keep track of stuff initially, I would make a note on, I revise that, that chat I had with that colleague who triggers me. And I would look at what part what what happened what came up that triggered me what part of that was was triggering for me and then i'd look at it and go okay so let's say they have made a comment yet again about how i have uh delivered a um a report um and and then i look at it and i'll i'll, I'll be what would i have loved for this to be um how would i have liked this mm -hmm this to mm. the outcome for me what would have been the ideal that mm. they say hey well done now initially it might seem like oh i'm not getting I'm, I'm i'm not getting the results but the more that you can uh get out of the state of the criticism into them accepting the one thing you want from them is acceptance you don't want the criticism because like i was saying you don't want it's not about them not criticizing so this would be how i'd say uh, to to um, people listening to this. It's not about avoiding the criticism. This is about being accepting of the work you're doing, being in a space of congratulations, well done on this. So they would sit, I would, I would then sit with, okay, I see them, or if 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 visually is uh, a visual visualization is something is a strong um, way for people to to uh, revise they would do that or hearing an auditory hearing mm -hmm. someone say something is mm -hmm. also important um, uh, it's also then that they can listen to the words that they wanted to hear from the person mm -hmm. they can see what they wanted to see mm -hmm. and what they then do is just bring that scene in and I and I also recommend we keep it simple and we keep it short if mm. we go into the whole thing of rewriting a long script this is often where it can uh, lose the energy it can lose the feeling and that's the other most important part is the feeling of it mm. feeling it more importantly is it I mean Neville says feeling is a secret mm. you've got to feel it feel that feeling of how would it be when I'm the person who is congratulated by this colleague, when they see me as um, the person who they admire or respect. And that's what we're really looking, we're looking for is the recognition, the admiration, not the criticism, not to avoid that. That's, that's fantastic. So you, like you mentioned some key points there and Neville goes into this very deeply, how we want to hear what we want to hear see what we want to see, sense what we want to sense. So uh, in my own life, um, I'm out of that work world now as an independent you know, person uh, in my coaching and so forth now. But I was in a situation where there was a director I worked for that the majority of the staff thought she was 
a biatch, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they really didn't, uh, they really just, they anticipated her, they expected her to be uh, very arrogant and coarse toward them. I did not. I knew that she loved me. I knew that she was kind toward me. I could hear her complimenting me for my work. I would visualize her coming into the room and saying, hi, Robert, good to see you today. Um, your clients are raving about your work. Now, was my actual physical work that much different than my co coworkers? Maybe. Maybe it was because I put my heart and soul in what I did. But perhaps it was very similar. But her perception of it was different. Why? And this is where people are needing to get it. We are actually affecting them mm -hmm. in the way they will treat us because of how we are perceiving them. Tough one to get at first, but they're actually vibrationally feeling us as yeah. accepting them, not for being rude and crude, but for being the, they have that kindness that's in there. They have that love in there. They just might not be expressing it toward those who are, oh, here she comes again. Oh man, I knew, I know she's <laughs> at work again. She's going to, she's going to yeah. uh, lecture us again today about our, our inadequate work, blah, blah, blah. And you yourself are thinking, well, I don't know about them, but she loves me. She loves my work. We can do this with someone who's mistreating us at work currently and see it completely change around. And that's what your revision work teaches. Yep. Amazing. And mm -hmm. revision really is, and, 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 and we spoke about this and I love it from, from feeling is the secret. What, what happens is whatever we take into our sleep state, Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're holding from your day, if you don't clear it, and that's what revision does, it allows you to reset your day. That's mm. that's what I would would impart and, and tell people. Remember, reset your day because whatever you take into the sleep state is what we imprint into the subconscious. And when we imprint that, the subconscious takes it as your request for this to be uh, a given it's given to you the next day more of that so this is why i love revision it is like that laser that you can when you get refined at it you can cut out the things that no longer serve you mm -hmm. and the next day you have less of whatever the previous day was and this is just literally doing this on a daily basis you start to set your clear your day out in terms of what you had experienced and uh, for me, what's important is then you start to become renewed. You, you, the next day, you're actually not carrying that, that baggage. Okay. And, so and, your attitude, your emotions, and, and I believe this, yes. literally your vibrations are here and not here where all the bad stuff happens. They're up here. Your vibration is there. Your thinking, your mood, your spirit. Now, again, we have a lot of new people here that, are, that haven't practiced these things. Um, if you were sitting out in YouTube land listening to this and you're wondering, you know, how can I begin to apply this? Um, you mentioned feeling is a secret. Uh, that's a very good place to start. That book is only four chapters and they can actually read that in one night. Now, Neville's works, of course, they can get online. They can also find on our website, truecosmic.com, which I will again post in the link. And I'm also going to uh, post, of course, your class, they'll be able to see how they can join your class and your coaching link. So again, let's take it from, from a similar angle, uh, Fazila, but let's say I have I gotten excited with this. And I said, you know what? This lady really knows what she's talking about. She seems like she'd be an excellent coach. Now they decide to take your coaching. What's your initial process and what, what could they expect if they spent a week or longer with your coaching? to have people understand um what they what do they see as the problem because if they don't um if we don't actually help them to see beyond the problem that's all they'll be focused on and once they can actually start to get into the practice of revision understanding where they themselves are what state are they holding understand how they can identify where they're at at a particular time, and then how to swap and move out of the state. That for me is quite important. So what you're talking about again is how do we constantly lift ourselves up out of what the situation is, regardless of what's going on in the physical world, how to actually operate above that. 
mm. and practice it to make it a you know the inner work for me the inner work is very important because once we do once we work internally we then project our consciousness like you said out into the physical world and the physical world is the mirror that's what's showing us about ourselves mm. and so for me it's so important is we look at what part of the inner work are they struggling with and that does require one-on-one -on -one, um one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, it depends on how deeply they want to go into that because we start with uh the um firstly understanding the law of assumption which is so mm. so important and why and how the mechanisms of your subconscious work and that is very foundational and then from there on I would always look at what level do they need to um to aspire to and what is the gap so mm -hmm. that for me is, is quite important and then we build on other things like we get your foundation correct get that solid so that you can springboard from there mm -hmm. and then manifestation becomes something easier hmm. Yeah. So if we could summarize that, basically, you're you're finding out the problem, you're identifying, you're helping them. And I find this a very important process where they actually can reflect back to themselves. They realize they're explaining. They, they may have no one they can talk to. Mm. And we are not therapists. We are coaches. We're pragmatic. We're going to give them the solution. We're not going to spend yeah. coach, couch sessions of therapy. Oh, I'm sorry you had this problem with your mom 20 years mm. ago and all that stuff. No. We understand the problem that you have a, a poor self-image, your self-concept is down. You always run into the same, uh, you have the same relationship repeating over and over that you don't want. So you understand whatever the, whatever their situation is, then you break down specific exercises you can give them to develop. And that's what I love about your revision class. And I hope many will decide to go ahead in the link and actually go take a look at that and perhaps take your revision class. So you, you break it down for them in actual coaching, paid coaching, you break mm -hmm. it down for them, and then you go ahead and give them steps to follow. Is that correct? Yeah, then practice is so important. Just reading, listening to, there's so much information out there these days. And, you know, it's going to, it's only going to, only going to see the difference when you apply what you are learning. Boom, and that's how I, I should... That. Eagle. Say that one more time, because we have so many on our Facebook site, God love them. They keep asking the same questions over and over and over. Evidently, they're not reading our posts and saying, oh, this is what I can apply. They come back with the same question, bless their hearts. And I mean, really, it's sometimes we, you know, as moderators and coaches, we have private conversations about this. So say that point again about application. That was key. So. I'm going to, it was in the moment, but I'm going to say this again. I'll paraphrase. You're not going to see much difference if all you're doing is listening and reading. You've got to apply what you are needing, to, where you need to make the change. You've got to apply what you're being, if you're working with a coach and they're telling you, please practice. I give specifics like seven days, do this. If you go and revise, just mm -hmm. prove it for yourself. This is what mm -hmm. Neville says. Mm -hmm. Prove, test the law and prove it. If you just revise for seven days, I promise you, you're going to find that when you don't do it, it's going to feel different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when I work with clients, depending on the program that we're engaging in, they will get a practice to do for seven days or, or 21 or 30 days or 90 days. Mm -hmm. And you're only going to be as good as how committed you are to application. yourself. Application. You know what? Application. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're coming to the end of our interview and I just wanted to, to maybe get a, a few more thoughts from you, but that is so important because just to emphasize, uh, kind of back up what you say, maybe from a different angle, is that people want to go on Facebook, on YouTube and get a quick bite, something that's going to help them make that money, something that's going to help them get that job, help them get that SP or special person or love that they're looking for, fix their problem with their weight. You know, suddenly... Uh, manifest that million dollars and so forth that is fantasy now we're not saying that some haven't ever done that no that's not the point the point is is that 99.9 percent .9 of us need to really fully understand it and then practice the steps because we're programmed from ch childhood a certain way we have to really reprogram as you mentioned earlier rearrange re revise sure i mean uh fazila it's been absolutely amazing talking to you and we're as i 
you and I, like you say, we're on the same wavelength all the time. We get along so well. You're there in South Africa. I hope some of your South African friends will uh, see this and join. And of course, we know you have clients worldwide. Okay. So um, just in wrapping it up, I'm going to go ahead and again, remind them, uh, please like, subscribe and comment. Please comment. And if you happen to be from Africa, all, all the better even. But from anywhere, please comment and give us what you thought. Now, Pazina is going to be coming back to this YouTube presentation in the comments and she's going to be answering some of your questions if you have those so please have those questions ready Fazila, just to wrap it up in a just maybe one or two minutes what would you like to, our friends to carry away in this interview that really to impact their lives I don't know about the law of assumption i'm going to suggest that you get familiar with it and start with feeling is the secret for me, consciousness creating reality has been, I wouldn't even say a shift. It has been a total transformation for my life. Um, I, I can't say enough about what Neville's work has done for me. If you want to stop rearranging the furniture and you want to redesign your architecture, literally, to become a new person, I suggest you do that. I mean, I'm, I've tested and proved it for myself. And uh, this is what I, I love seeing the transformation with my clients. Marvelous. So that marvelous. is what hmm. Marvelous. Thank you so much, Bill. It's been amazing having you with us. And I know we're going to get a lot of comments. And I'm going to link, I'm going to mention that suggestion about that book, Feeling is a Secret, your classes, how they can find you as a coach. And I know I'll be talking to you real soon because we communicate frequently. Also on uh, Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings. I want to thank you so much, Fazila. It's been my honor to have you, you with us. Me. Continue to be blessed. And of course, our viewers, please apply, replay this video, apply what she suggested because it works. Thanks again. And I'll talk to you again. One and all, Fazila, thank you so much.